The Practical Theatre Company was a Chicago-based theatre company founded by Northwestern University students and active throughout the 1980s. Its productions included new plays, satiric agitprop, rock and roll events, and a series of successful improvisational comedy reviews. The PTC, whose motto was Art is Good, is notable for the fact that the entire cast of its 1982 improvisational comedy review, The Golden 50th Anniversary Jubilee Brad Hall, Seinfeld star Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Gary Kroger and Paul Barros was hired by Saturday Night Live. At its peak in the mid-1980s, the Practical Theatre Company operated two theatre spaces, the 42-seat storefront John Lennon Auditorium in Evanston, Illinois and a 150-seat cabaret in Piper's Alley at North and Wells in Chicago. During that period, with its run of hit improvisational reviews, the PTC briefly rivaled the Second City as Chicago's leading comedy troupe. History <laughs> Early years 1979–1980 The Practical Theatre Company was founded in 1979 under the name Attack Theatre at Northwestern University by Brad Hall, Paul Barros, Robert Mendel, and Angela Murphy as a not-for-profit theatre company dedicated to the production of improvisational comedy and new plays. The company's first show, Clowns, a play about two improvisational comedians written and performed by artistic directors Hall and Barros, opened on April 11, 1979 at Shanley Hall on the new campus. In September of 79, Attack Theatre's inaugural season closed with a pair of one-act plays staged at National College of Education, Playgrounds by Hall and On the Fritz by Grace McKinney and Louis Black with a cast featuring Laura Innes. In 1980, after officially changing its name to the Practical Theatre Company, the group moved to Evanston's Noise Cultural Arts Center for its second season. Among the shows that season was the first of the group's improvisational comedy reviews, Bag O' Fun. The show's mix of slapstick, satire, absurdist comedy, agitprop, and literary sophistication tied together with music and offbeat song and dance numbers established a unique style and format that the PTC would refine in more than a dozen reviews over the next seven years. The John Lennon Auditorium In the fall of 1980, the company relocated to a leased storefront at 703 Howard Street on the border of Evanston and Chicago. The company named their new storefront theater space the John Lennon Auditorium. Ironically, just two months after they christened their new theater in his honor, John Lennon was killed on December 8, 1980. The 42-seat John Lennon Auditorium the JLA was designed by actor and theatrical designer Louis Di Crescenzo, whom Brad Hall had met when they were both in the cast of the original production of Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up? Material support from other Chicago theaters helped the PTC to build the JLA. Artistic director Robert Falls of Wisdom Bridge Theater located further east on Howard Street was renovating his space and donated his old theater seats. Stuart Oaken and Jason Brett of the Apollo Theatre in Lincoln Park donated lighting equipment. Topic Thrills and Glory The Practical Theatre Company's third season, its first at the John Lennon Auditorium, proved to be a turning point for the group. The season opened on March 21, 1981 with Thrills and Glory, the group's second improvisational comedy review. Rush Pearson, Gary Kroger and Reed Branson joined Paul Barros in the cast. In one sketch, a squad of American soldiers found themselves on the eve of battle in Basra, Iraq. In its choice of satiric targets, the PTC was often ahead of its time. Later that season, a premiere of the dark comedy Stunning Achievements in Iowa by Mark D. Kaufman was a critical success, earning the group its first of many Joseph Jefferson Awards. Scubber <laughs> Hay The turning point that third season came when the prominent director Sheldon Patinkin came to the JLA to judge the group's third improvisational comedy review Scubber Hay for the Joseph Jefferson Committee. Patinkin's involvement with the practical theatre helped to accelerate the young company's development, artistically and from a business standpoint. 
Scubber Hay featured Barros, Hall, Pearson and Louis Dreyfus, whom Barros and Pearson met when they performed together in the 1980 Meow show at Northwestern. Scubber Hay was a critical and box office hit, and the group closed its first season at the JLA with Beggar's Holiday, an original comedy which opened on November 28, 1981 to a glowing review by Richard Christensen of the Chicago Tribune, who called the PTC as zany a bunch of intellectual clowns as the earth can hold. The Brothers Bubba The PTC's second season in the John Lennon Auditorium opened on April Fool's Day, 1982 with The Brothers Bubba, the group's fourth improvisational comedy review. Under Paddington's guidance, Hall, Barros, Pearson, Kroger, and Jane Muller crafted the company's most successful show to date, as 1,314 ticket buyers crammed into the 42-seat JLA over the six-week run. It was clear that, given the company's increasing popularity, a larger space in addition to the JLA was needed to mount the group's next improvisational comedy review. <laughs> Attack Theatre and the Practical Women Meanwhile, the «Attack Theatre» name was revived for a series of agitprop after shows under the direction of Terry McCabe, another new alum. Attack Theatre took on social and political issues like gun control and the abuse of women in short, provocative pieces, staged after the main stage shows at the JLA. Other after shows featured The Practical Women, a project led by PTC co-founder Angela Murphy, designed to encourage female talent in the male-dominated improvisational comedy environment. The Piper's Alley Theatre and Saturday Night Live Sheldon Patinkin was responsible for introducing the PTC to Second City founder Bernard Salins, with whom they reached an agreement to open a cabaret in a Piper Alley space behind Second City. The 150-seat Piper's Alley Theatre was designed by Louis Di Crescenzo specifically to be the home of the PTC's comedy reviews. The Golden Jubilee The first show at the Piper's Alley Theatre, The Golden 50th Anniversary Jubilee, opened on July 28, 1982 and put the practical theatre in the national spotlight when it caught the attention of Saturday Night Live producers Dick Ebersole and Bob Tischler. Just weeks into the show's run, Ebersole and Tischler hired the four stars of the show, Hall, Barros, Louis Dreyfus and Kroger, as writers and performers on the well-known NBC late-night comedy program. The association with Saturday Night Live would cause considerable change within the PTC. Artistic directors Hall and Barros split their time between working at SNL in New York and returning to Chicago on their breaks to oversee the practical theater company, especially pre-production and rehearsals for Megafun, the group's next comedy review in Piper's Alley, and the opening of the practical women's first main stage show at the John Lennon Auditorium, a cast of Squirrels Before Swine, featuring Angela Murphy, Isabella Hoffman, Lynn Baber, Sandy Snyder and Aline Getz. Squirrels Before Swine's 13-week run at the JLA was the PTC's longest to date. Megafun The PTC's second improvisational comedy review at Piper's Alley, Megafun, opened on March 24, 1983 and became the company's longest-running, most successful show to date. Featured in the cast were Tom Virtue, Richard Kind, Victoria Zielinski, Jeff Luperton, Lynn Anderson, Jamie Barron and Jane Muller. To have followed its breakthrough national success with another critical and popular hit established the practical as arguably the preeminent comedy company in Chicago. <laughs> Babylonie and Off-Broadway In the summer of 1983, after one season of SNL, Barros returned to full-time work with the Practical Theatre Company and the group's third comedy review at Piper's Alley, Babylonie, featuring Barros, Pearson, Barron, Muller, Lynn Baber and Rod McLaughlin, with Larry Shanker on piano and Ronnie Crawford on drums. In his review of the show, Christensen of the Tribune wrote, 
it's encouraging, as well as entertaining, to see the practicals still turning out the same sweet, zany humor that first endeared them to audiences. They may have lost some of their membership to Saturday Night Live in New York and to Second City Next Door, but as this review proves, they have not lost their capacity for fun." An enthusiastic variety review caught the attention of Arthur Cantor, a New York-based theatrical producer, who brought the show to the Provincetown Playhouse in Greenwich Village in February 1984, but it had substantial cast and content changes. Babylonie was not nearly as successful off-Broadway as it was in Chicago. The show received mixed reviews from New York critics and closed after three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Association with the Goodman Theatre By the spring of 1984, the PTC was no longer operating in the Piper's Alley Theatre, though it continued to stage shows at the John Lennon Auditorium in Evanston, most notably Soapbox Sweepstakes, a satire of the 1984 presidential election campaigns which ran for 31 weeks, right up to Election Day. The PTC's next comedy review, The Merry Guys Who Windsurf, was staged at the Goodman Theatre Studio and directed by Barros with a cast including Herb Metzler, John Goodrich, Ross Salinger, Kit Falsgraf, McLaughlin and Baber. Backed by Michael Menes on piano, Victor Peterson on guitar, and Roger Anderson on drums, Merry Guys was well reviewed by critics, and Barry St. Edmund at the Chicago Reader opined, The Merry Guys Who Windsurf is going to be your basic summer comedy hit. But Merry Guys failed to draw large audiences to the Goodman studio. The group continued its association with the Goodman's artistic director Greg Mosher, who cast many PTC ensemble members and musical director Shankar in his adaptation of A Christmas Carol at the Auditorium Theatre, a landmark 3,900-seat theatre in downtown Chicago. The production, whose cast included Barros, Hall, Frank Galati, Innes and Del Close, received mixed reviews from critics. The last years 1985–1988 In 1985, the company refocused its efforts on staging plays at the John Lennon Auditorium, but after producing a pair of one-act plays, it became apparent that the 42-seat theatre would not provide enough revenue to meet the costs of an actor's equity contract the PTC had signed earlier in the year, and the group left the theatre it had built. Topic Art, Ruth and Trudy In May 1986, the Practical Theatre Company opened its next improvisational comedy review, Art Ruth and Trudy at Club Victoria, nearly two years since its last review closed at the Goodman Studio. Featuring Barros, Victoria Zielinski, Baron, musical director Steve Rashid on piano, and guided by Patinkin, Art, Ruth and Trudy received very positive reviews and became the longest-running show in the company's history. The show then moved to the larger Briar Street Theatre and on to the even larger Vic Theatre where it finished its nine-month run. Bozo the Town In 1987, the company premiered its last comedy review of the 1980s, Bozo the Town at the Vic Theatre. With Barros, Zielinski and Kyle Hefner in the cast, backed by Steve Rashid on piano and Don Stiernberg on guitar, Bozo received mixed reviews and ran for two months. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Me That same year, Patinkin worked with Barros and Hall to develop Rock Me, a show about an aging garage band for Columbia College's new musicals project. On August 1, 1988, the Practical Theatre performed Rock Me, to a sold-out house at the Apollo Theatre. Joining Hall and Barros in the cast were Zielinski, Pearson, Peter Van Wagner and keyboardist Shankar. The production also starred fellow Northwestern alum Megan Mullally. Rock Me, would be the last PTC performance in Chicago for 23 years. The PTC returns 2010 After a 22-year hiatus, the Practical Theatre Company re-emerged in June 2010 when Barros, Zielinski and Rashid opened the Vic and Paul show in Los Angeles. They brought the improvisational comedy review to Chicago for a one-week run in June 2011, the first PTC show in Chicago in 23 years. 
The Vic and Paul show returned to Chicago in December 2011 for a two-week run at Main Stage in the North Side Rogers Park neighborhood. In the summer of 2012, The Vic and Paul Show played the Beverly Arts Center in Chicago, the 14th Street Theater in Cleveland's Playhouse Square, and the I.O. West Theater in Los Angeles. The PTC production Mr. Olsen's New Year's Rockin' Neighborhood was staged at 27 Live in Evanston, Illinois on New Year's Eve 2013. In 2015, Paul Barros and Victoria Zielinski teamed with fellow Northwestern University and Meow Show alum, Dana Olson, to write and perform a comedy review entitled The Vic and Paul and Dana Show at I.O. West in Hollywood, featuring Steve Rashid on keys and Ronnie Crawford on drums. The following year, they staged Mr. Olson's Holiday Party at Studio 5 in Evanston. Graphic artists The Practical Theatre Company worked with a number of distinguished graphic artists during its history, notably Ron Crawford, Gary Whitney, Paul Ginnon and John Goodrich. Topic rock and Roll The group's house rock and roll band, Riffmaster and the Rock Me Foundation became a fixture on the Chicago club scene in the mid-1980s and continues to play together on occasion, most recently in 2010 at Space in Evanston and in 2013 at 27 Live, also in Evanston, the college town where the practical theater began. Another notable band formed by PTC members were the Daves. Topic production history Clowns 1979 Subnormal 1979 Playgrounds 1979 On the Fritz 1979 Bag O' Fun 1980 Nightfall 1980 Citizen Stumpick 1980 Sant Oklaus on the Christmas Beat 1980 Thrills and Glory 1981 Subnormal 1981 Stunning Achievements in Iowa 1981 Scubber Hay 1981 Beggar's Holiday 1981 The Brothers Bubba 1982 Song of the Snells 1982 No Restroom for the Wicked 1982 The Golden 50th Anniversary Jubilee 1982 A Cast of Squirrels Before Swine 1982 The Practical Theatre Company Meets Godzilla 1982 Megafun 1983 Diary of a Madman 1983 Babylonie 1983 My Dog Ate It 1983 Flight 1983 Tomato 1983 A Passion for Being Nice 1983 Wild Connections 1983 Hula Rama 1983 The Diamond Anniversary Comedy Ball and Cakewalk 1984 Beats Workin The Best of the Practical Theatre Company 1984 Soapbox Sweepstakes The 1984 Election Review 1984 The Merry Guys Who Windsurf 1984 Noonday Demons 1985 Wendell and Betty in the Throes of Anarchy 1985 Art Ruth and Trudy 1986 Dear Season 1986 Bozo the Town 1987 Rock me, 1988